and welcome to episode two of the Buckeye Fever podcast. My name is Dave Holmes. I will be your host. You know, when I started this podcast last week, we got episode one done, and it was always all pats on the back, all around ABC6. We did it. We did it. And then I, I woke up, and I was like, wow. We've got another one to do. So we are now in the grind. Episode two, thank you so much for those of you who joined us on episode one. The Ohio State Buckeyes are coming off a 52-6 win over the Akron Zips, which is what you expect when Ohio State plays against Akron. Okay, so they took care of business. The biggest storyline coming out of that game, and I hate to say it because it is a bit of a low-hanging fruit, is Jeremiah Smith. Ohio State's true freshman, he's a teenager, Barely old enough to vote in this year's election, and Jeremiah Smith scores two touchdowns, and the most impressive play wasn't even a TD. It set up a touchdown, a one-handed, left-handed catch way down the field on a 50-yard bomb. Jeremiah Smith is worth the hype. In a time when everyone gets the hype and doesn't live up to it, he does. Now, I tweeted something, and if you follow me on X, then your name must be Elon Musk because you're the only one who calls it that. So if you follow me on Twitter, like a normal person, You would know that about 80% of my Buckeye tweets are joking, sarcastic, hyperbole on game day. I like to poke and have a good time. But I tweeted, after those two touchdowns, the Ohio State record book is officially on notice, to which one person replied, and I don't want to give out their Twitter handle, because we're not here to make you famous on the Buckeye Fever podcast. you got to get yourself famous, sir, not on my watch. But this person who actually had ostrich in his name. That's what I will give you. He had ostrich in his name, so maybe it's a brain size issue, but either way. This man with ostrich in his handle uh, said to me, quote, it's halfway through the first game and it's Akron. Calm down. Okay, first off, anonymous ostrich, uh, I will not calm down. I will do whatever I want on the Twitter platform. Uh, But no, okay, so in all seriousness, the take is fine, right? That he's, he says, hey, calm down. It's one half of football, and it's again, it's Akron. All right, I checked out. That, those are all facts. Yes, it was Akron. It was one half of football. But riddle me this, young ostrich. Do you not think that Jeremiah Smith is headed for the record books? Because if you don't, let me throw some numbers at you. The Ohio State all-time receiving record is 2,898 yards held by Michael Jenkins. You're telling me that Jeremiah Smith, and remember, who has to stay in school for three years and is a starting receiver now for the next three years, you're telling me that he can't average 966 yards a season? You're telling me that he can't average 966 yards for three years? How about Chris Olave's touchdown record? 35 touchdowns for Chris Olave. You're telling me Jeremiah Smith cannot score 12 touchdowns a year for three years. He has two in the opening game. Chris Olave, you're on notice. Michael Jenkins, you're on notice. All-time receptions mark, 201, held by K.J. Hill. You're telling me Jeremiah Smith can't average 67 catches a season the next three years? K.J. Hill, you're on notice. Not as much as the first two guys, but you're still on notice. Jeremiah Smith's going to play here for three years. And in those three years, he is going to obliterate some of these records. Ostrich, my man, I love you, but your head's in the ground on this one. Jeremiah Smith is worth the hype. Now, the only thing that can derail the Jeremiah Smith hype train is if for some reason uh, a collective bargaining thing opened and they changed the rule that you have to be out of high school for three years. So here's what I need everyone to do. I hate to do this. I never wanted this show to get political. But I need everyone listening right now to call your senator, to email your representative, and tell them we cannot allow the NFL under any circumstances to change the rule that requires a player to be out of high school for three years. We need, we need to lock in Jeremiah Smith for three years in Columbus. Senators, House of Reps, you know what? Vote for candidates who are pro-Jeremiah Smith. I'm a one-issue voter this year. I never wanted this to get political. But, Dave, what if it's just a school board? I don't care. If they're pro-Jeremiah Smith, it shows a competence level that I want to support. So as long as we can keep Jeremiah Smith healthy and in Columbus for three years, yes, my fine-feathered friend, the ostrich, the record books are on notice. Being a full-time student, I'm always on the go. 
And Good Day Columbus is always on my side, keeping me connected whenever I need them. I live stream every morning through the ABC6 News app and catch up on their YouTube channel to see what I missed while in class. Bring light rain showers in Eastern Ohio. Instant alerts help me reroute my drive to school and help me remember my umbrella on my way to meet with friends. Staying in the know is only a few clicks away. I'm Mahak Sheik and Good Day Columbus is the perfect way for me to start my day. All right, this week the Buckeyes play Western Michigan, or as our sicko degenerate fans would call them, that team up north and then to the west. Let's bring in Beanie Wells now, former Ohio State running back. So, Beanie, first off, Western Michigan. We we know the Buckeyes are going to steamroll the Broncos. But is there any animosity toward Western Michigan or Central Michigan or Eastern <laughs> Michigan? Does it stop at Michigan? Does it go to Michigan State? How much do we hate that state? Uh, I think it, it doesn't stop anywhere. I mean, once you cross that line, that state <laughs> line, I think the hate has to run for everybody. So I, I certainly think this one should be no different. You should carry that same animosity, go up with that same wheel that you would be playing when you're playing the guys in the blue uniforms. Okay, I hate to do this to you, but every time I have a guest on, I give you a heads up of a segment so you can think ahead of time because we talk kind of off the wall. You're about to get ambushed. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Here's what happened. I asked four or five former players to do this segment. They all refused. So I, it, it dawned on me, no one's going to do this segment unless I trap them. So you're about to get trapped on a podcast. You don't know what's coming. We are going to say five good things about the state of Michigan, Beanie. Torch Lake is amazing. <laughs> okay, okay. Torch Lake okay. is amazing. I love that you're going to play ball here uh, because I asked, I think I asked Joshua Perry, I asked Tyvis Powell, and they said, heck, I ain't coming on your show. Until. So, okay, so we're going to start with, I have sand dunes okay. on my list, right? right? We don't have sand dunes down here. No, no. Hey, you go up there and run up and down the sand dunes. It's a great way to get like a Navy SEAL workout. Uh-huh. Some, okay, so you're going Torch Lake. So both of us are going beauty. Um, can we think of something else nice about the state of Michigan? Um... Not many things. I mean, they got some great lakes there. They touch four of the five great lakes. Exactly. So you, if you want to go up in the summertime and enjoy a nice uh, place on the water, Michigan may be the place to go. Michigan has good lakes. I like the golf courses. They've got Arcadia Bluffs, Crystal Downs, Oakland Hills. They've got some good golf up there. Uh, cars. They make cars. That's a great thing. I mean, have you ever driven a car from Michigan? Heck yeah, I'm driving one right now. There you go. Yeah, so GM is incredible. <laughs> out of Michigan. We <laughs> can give Michigan. them that. <laughs> out of Michigan. How about, uh, can we can we extend our list to Motown and Eminem? They've got some music. 100%. 100%. They, they do have some good things about them. There's some good music came out of Michigan. Yeah, they do have a couple of good things now that you, you mention it. You know, it they, wasn't the first thing that jumped off my mind, you know, when we're talking about Michigan, but... Yeah, when you break it down, they got a couple of good things. Speaking of Michigan music, can I admit on this? Uh, this 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 could be this could be the last podcast episode, and it's early in the season. Can I say <laughs> safely in Columbus that uh, Beanie? Do I want to do this? Maybe not. You think hail to the much. Vi- hail to the victors? Is it's kind of catchy? Beanie. No, no, stop, no, Beanie, stop, Beanie, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. That's where we draw the line right there. Absolutely not. You don't think it's catchy? No, I don't even know it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're well, it from my memory day. We might edit that part out. Let me think of if I okay. So I'm going to say golf courses. I'm going to say sand cars. I'm going to say Motown. We're going to cross off Hail to the Victors because I almost got myself killed here in the studio. <laughs> my last one is the is the shape of the state. Have you ever met someone from Michigan? They put their hand up like this. It's a mitten, right? And you say, "Hey, where are you from?" And they don't say a city. It's adorable. <laughs> These people, like they're I mean, grown men, like they're six years old. Go, I'm right here. I'm up here by the index finger. I, we can't do that with Ohio. No, not at all. But it's it's baby like, like you said, they're they're babies <laughs> doing that. We're in mittens. You're from a mitten, a place that looks like a mitten. Because grown men wear gloves. Exactly. If no grown man is walking around with a mitten. No. Like if your if your shape was state like if a shape state was shaped like a glove, I'd have a little more respect. So all right. So can we say anything good about Michigan's football? No. Pro- okay. No. Oh no no no. Right. Nothing. That. We're gonna draw the line there. Not the University of Michigan. I mean, obviously, you can Western Michigan. Bron- Barry, uh, Barry Sanders is the best thing that you can say. Oh, Michigan. Barry Sanders yeah. played for the Play, Lions. Played for the Lions. That's it. And and you know what I love That's about where I you? Draw the line. Uh, so okay, so I love that about you because Barry Sanders to me is my favorite football player of all time. And when the Browns went away, I became a de facto Lions fan for those couple of years because I had to have an NFL team. Mm-hmm. So so we'll give him that. Even though you know Oklahoma State to Detroit, we can give him Barry Sanders. What what else do they have up there? Do they make? They got that bridge, the Mackinac Bridge. Yes, I'm not even. I mean, Who cares? They're close to Canada and Detroit. So I mean, we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michigan, Michigan is just southern Canada. That's it. That's it's uh, southern Canada, is. shaped like a mitten. You know what? 
We're going to do another episode with you, Beanie. Instead of five good things about Michigan, we're going to do 20 bad things. Can oh, you do that next time? Oh, 100%. All right. Thanks for joining and for, for uh, surviving the ambush here. I feel gross. I got to go take a shower. <laughs> you know what I love? So I've known Beanie Wells for a long time, at least a decade. And I love that he's too smart to fall for the hail to the victor's pit <laughs> because Beanie knows full well that if he would have just given in to the fact that the hail to the victors is a catchy song, I would have edited that thing so bad out of context. I would have clipped him. I would have thrown him on social. Man. Thanks again, though. We love Beanie Wells for stopping by here. Okay, so next up, the Ohio State Buckeyes do play Western Michigan. And what are we looking for? Out of the out of the Broncos. All right. What I want to see from Ohio State is really to get Quinshawn Judkins going. They tried in the opener against Akron, 13 carries for 55 yards. You could tell Chip Kelly wanted to go there. He led the team in carries. Because these early games, these first few games, Akron, Western Michigan, Marshall, these are the games where you get your stats, you get your reps. These are the everyone's happy kind of games early in the season, these blowout games against Mac schools. And I understand that, you know, the players on the team don't publicly say this stuff, right? But there is no position like running back where a guy wants to get touches. And one of the main storylines on this team is how are you going to keep Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins happy? Travion looked good in limited time. I think he only carried the ball eight times, but he looked good in his carries. And I understand that the Buckeye players, they're all going to say, no, 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 it's the brotherhood, the brotherhood, the brotherhood. But when you're a running back, there's something else besides the brotherhood, and it's called the livelihood. The livelihood, the livelihood, the livelihood. And a running back in the NFL has a lifespan that's about the same length as a fruit fly. Google it. They don't live long. Running backs rarely get a second contract, or at least a second big contract, in the NFL. Few guys have, Todd Gurley, Zeke, and, and those didn't pan out too well, so now guys are not getting big second contracts. But my point is this. Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins both want to be first-round draft picks. That's probably a stretch given how little the NFL values running backs. Second round is the new first round. But they want to be high picks, they want to be showcased, and you want to keep them happy. So for me, going into Western Michigan – I want to see the Buckeyes feed Quinshawn Judkins, make him feel like a part of this team. Let's get him to pop off for 100 and a touch. These are the games to really put your foot on the throttle and make these guys feel like they're a part of the show. Well, this weekend, the Buckeyes play Western Michigan, the Broncos. Their mascot is Buster Broncos, so we have a Buster against a Brutus. Uh, for more on the world of horses, I bring in our horse correspondent here on the Buckeye Fever podcast. You know him from the Big Ten Network, Mike Hall. Mike, thanks so much for joining us here. I, I want to talk horses. I know you have a great knowledge of the mm -hmm. equine industry. So Buster Bronco, where does this guy rank? Who are some of the most famous horses in all of history? Buster's not even in my top seven. Okay. okay. Number one, Secretariat. Yeah, it's it's a no brainer. What, I mean, he needs to get the McGuire bonds treatment because what he did doesn't seem legal <laughs> and fair. You don't think it holds up? Is there an asterisk next to secretariat? I'm not. I'm not trying to start something here. But let's be honest, that time doesn't make sense. And no one's come close to it. And that's not like technology in the 70s was better than it is now. You Apparently, he had a heart like a T-Rex in hindsight. But that's neither here nor there. OK, so go on after secretariat. Uh, USC's traveler. Woo. OK. Beautiful, powerful, historic. We rarely see animals that are live uh, at sporting events, and you will see that clean white horse at every USC home game. I'm a huge fan of live mascots at games. If you're PETA, animal people, don't write me. I, I want them treated well. I just love a good live mascot. Okay, who else you got? Number three of the best horses of all time is Trojan. Hmm. The ability to hide people in a wooden horse. <laughs> and take them in and all of them to be quiet. And then your opponents accept that gift. And then when you're inside the walls, you leap out and attack them. That's the, it should be higher than three on my list of best horses. Well, first off, I love that we have just named him Trojan. I, at first I'm like, wait, who is this horse? Oh yes, we're going back to like Sparta or something. Yes. Yeah, first off, who just says, hey, you know, our enemies have decided to give us this massive gift that could probably hide a thousand soldiers inside. It seems to me I would be skeptical of the Trojan gift. It feels pretty clear the smarter team won that battle. <laughs> I think that was some Darwinism at work there with Trojan. Okay, who's horse number four? Mr. Ed. But 
well, so to me, Ed is a tier of his own because if we just talk purely talking horses, Correct. the list the list gets funneled pretty quickly with Mr. Ed. He's an all time horse. Comedic antics, witty banter. What more do you want from a horse that can talk? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, my number five is dark. The dark horse is always a joy, no matter what the sport is. Dark. <laughs> okay. At first I thought, okay, what Disney or Pixar movie have I not seen? So you're talking dark literal horse. dark horses, as in uh, horse. a team that comes from behind to win it all. What you didn't see happening, the underdog, the dark horse. Everybody left. You don't see it coming. He's the dark horse. He's named that for a reason. You hear nothing about the light horse. No one no. cares about the light horse. Only the dark no. horse. Exactly. Exactly. And the final one on my list of horse rankings. My Little Pony. Oh, so now that's a sleeper pick. All right. Yeah. I could admit that I used to play My Little Ponies. I had one sister who was older and those were sneaky good horses in the late 80s. If you grew up, you and I are about the same age. So if you grew up late 80s, My Little Pony was a very pivotal horse of our childhood. Correct. Uh, uh, some cartoon successes, TV shows, movies, My Little Ponies, underrated horse. You know, we just got a text here to the Buckeye Fever podcast. It is uh, from Bullseye from Toy Story. He's outraged. Uh -huh. He has heard about your list, and he wants to know what he has to do. How many Toy Stories do they have to crank out? They're on, like, Toy Story 12 at this point before Bullseye gets some love from Mike Hall. I love Bullseye, but Mr. Ed's got him beat on, on the ability to talk, right? <laughs> right? And let's be fair. If you're doing power rankings of Toy Story characters, is Bullseye in the top 15? No. I mean, Bullseye really? Bullseye needs a better agent because Woody has all the lines. You're right. Mr. Ed is a much better talking horse. Okay, I'll give you one other one that I think you left off. The horse of a different color. <laughs> That's good. From the Wizard of Oz. To me, this is a groundbreaking horse in 1939. No one's, no one's even doing color. All right, so the Wizard of Oz comes by in 39. We're all black and white. All of a sudden, this horse says, not only am I color, I'm a different color every second. He was changing. To me, that's a groundbreaking, trailblazing horse. He is underrated and overlooked, and it shouldn't be that way. You're right. He belongs on the list. <laughs> Perhaps he is a dark horse in the horse debate. Full circle. Full, Full circle. circle. Well, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to talk something so silly because we just didn't feel like breaking down Western Michigan football for five minutes. I appreciate the time. Like you said, I'm an equine expert. It's about time people knew it. It's here. The new edition of the Football Fever 2024. This game is unreal. Check out these new features. It's not just game day stuff. It's a ton of fun loaded with all your favorite Buckeye traditions. It even has dynasty mode. Whoa. Now check out this team. The veteran quarterback surrounded by an all-star cast to break it all down. It's the only game you need this year. The Football Fever 2024. It's the perfect play. Saturday morning at 11 on ABC6. So I know we're not exactly breaking down Western Michigan. And if you tuned in to the Buckeye Fever podcast wanting me to break down the actual Broncos on the field and not horses. I understand that. Okay, so here's one tidbit. Jalen Buckley, good player. They're running back. Ran for 1,000 yards last year, two touchdowns in the opener. By the way, in all seriousness, Western Michigan did give Wisconsin a scare in week one. They were leading the Badgers in the fourth quarter on the road before Wisconsin scored two touchdowns to win that game. Now, I don't know if that says more about Western Michigan or Wisconsin, I'm afraid for Luke Fickle's sake, it might say more about the Badgers. But still, shout out to Western Michigan. They, 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 they did play Wisconsin tough in round one. So this will put a bow on episode two of the Buckeye Fever podcast. I do want to thank people for watching and listening last week. I saw the numbers. Amazingly, they were actually pretty good. I don't know if it was my insecurities that expected this thing to flop. They were pretty good. Now, not Joe Rogan good. Joe's not shaking in his boots. We got a long ways to go before we're coming for you, Joe. But it was actually pretty good. Now, episode two, retention rate. Yee. Retention rate's a scary thing in a podcast. How many people listen to episode two? We're going to find out. I think doing five minutes of horse talk on an Ohio State football podcast was a bold choice. Time will tell if, if that was the right gamble to make. But we're trying to give you a little something. We're trying to give you some football, some fun. Thanks again to Beanie Wells for stopping by, even though I could not trick him into saying Hails to the Victors is a catchy tune. Thanks again to Mike Hall for stopping by and talking all things horses. Thank you to you for listening to Episode 2 of the Buckeye Fever Podcast. Tell your friends about it. 
Hopefully say, hey, don't avoid this podcast. Tell them to download, click, subscribe, leave a five-star. We appreciate you. And we'll see you back here next week as the Buckeyes are 2-0. That's my hot take. They're winning this week. The 2-0 Buckeyes getting ready to take on Marshall. We'll see you back here next week on Episode 3 of the Buckeye Fever Podcast.